Hey, I'm Callum from TNW, and let me tell you, the time is nigh. Yes, streaming is booming, vinyl sales are soaring, and that means one thing and one thing only. It's time to reassess the CD. Yes, we are here today to talk about the unappreciated humble compact disc and talk about it we are gonna so without any further ado because we've got a lot of different topics to cover let's just dive straight in you can't talk about music without the topic of quality coming up so surprise surprise we're going to talk about the issue of quality and specifically what that actually means now i think when we talk about music quality there are three main things we are talking about the first is the quality of the recording of the actual music itself. The second is the quality of the equipment you're using to listen to it. And finally, the quality of the file or format you're listening to. And unsurprisingly, as this video is all about CDs, that latter one is gonna be the point we're focusing on. Before we begin, a little quick note. We're gonna be talking about all kinds of different topics, many of which would require really a whole video by themselves to accurately and precisely explain. But we don't have whole videos for that. Instead, what we're gonna do is just try and give you a broad overview of how digital music works and you know some of the building blocks that make it happen. Basically, we're gonna try and keep things as light and entertaining and easy to follow as possible. So with all this in mind, to really understand digital music files, there are three bits of language we need to comprehend, specifically sampling rate, bit depth, and bit rate. First off, sampling rate and bit depth are only used for uncompressed music files. There'll be more information on what that means later. Now onto what sampling rate actually is. The simplest way of putting it is sampling rate determines the highest frequencies that can be accurately reproduced. Think of a smooth sound wave. The sampling rate is a number of points following this that try and emulate it as accurately as possible. Some graphs in this vein are slightly misleading because they show a jagged sound wave. This in practice never actually happens because the process of turning the digital file into an analog sound, well, the wave is smoothed in that process. Despite this, the graph is a good visualization for quality because it shows the higher the sample rate, effectively the higher number of points, the higher quality of sound you should receive. Of course, up to a point and more on what that means in a little bit. The most common sample rate is that which you see on CDs and FLAC, which is 44.1 kilohertz. What that means is that every second of music, there are 44,100 sample points taken to turn that analog sound into a digital one. Think of that like TV or frame rate in that you are shown a moving image that consists of lots of still ones packed one after another that gives the impression of movement in a scene. To talk a little bit about that 44.1 kilohertz figure, well, the reason it's there is because it allows the accurate reproduction of sound frequencies up to 22 kilohertz. Why it doesn't go up to 44 kilohertz is pretty complex and is a topic for another video, but if that's a burning issue for you, I'd suggest maybe go and read up on the Nyquist theorem. Anyway, the limits of human hearing only go up to 20 kilohertz and most people cannot hear anywhere near that high anyway. We'll touch on why that's relevant in a little bit. But to sum up sampling rate, you can see it is akin to frames per second in an audio sense and it controls the frequency of the sounds we hear. If we think of sampling rate as the frames per second of a television, then bit depth, well, we can look at that a little bit like resolution. There are four main bit depths in uncompressed music. These are 8-bit, 16-bit, 24-bit, and 32-bit. Basically, these control the amount of dynamic range that's available in a track, effectively how loud or quiet it is at certain points. It's important to think about that a little bit. Now, this is gonna annoy some audio nerds, but it is supremely unlikely that as a listener, you are going to notice any difference whatsoever once you go above 16-bit bit depth. 
Realistically, those higher bit depth files are far more useful for recording and mastering than they are for a listener. Now, we could go into this in more depth and as well throw up some of the counterpoints to that opinion, but realistically, it is simply not worth our time. Anyway, let's backtrack. Bit depth and sampling rate are deeply connected. Let's take the standard CD format of 44.1 thousand kilohertz sampling rate and a 16 bit bit depth. What this means is that for those 44,100 samples taken every second, there are 16 bits of information in each and every one of them. Let's circle back to a previous point about uncompressed music. Now, when a file has a bit depth and sample rate, that is referred to as lossless. The reason for this, as the name suggests, is that literally no quality is lost. And formats like CD or FLAC files are examples of this. Bitrate is an expression of the amount of data a file is producing per second. For example, 128 kilobits per second is a pretty common file size for lots of music. Now, the most common file you'll see presented in this way is an MP3, and this is what streaming services like Spotify use. And if you use Spotify Premium, the highest quality you can get on that, and as well as the highest quality you get of an MP3, is 320 kilobits a second. In comparison, an average CD has a bit rate of 1,411 kilobits per second, which is about four and a half times the amount of data that the highest quality available MP3 has. The reason for this is simple. Files like the aforementioned MP3 and as yet to be mentioned AAC are lossy. This means they're compressed in such a way to reduce file size and the nature of that compression is shearing off parts of the file that effectively our human ears aren't able to comprehend. If you remember back to earlier in the video, that is really any frequency above 20 kilohertz. But there are issues with this approach and we'll get into some of those now. This is the point where I wanted to contextualize everything that we've spoken about already in this video. I'm not gonna to spend too much time on it because I have no desire to be murdered by audio heads across the internet. And I'd also like to reiterate that a lot of the listening experience depends on the quality of the equipment that you have and as well as critical listening. If you don't have good gear and you listen to something haphazardly, a lot of this isn't gonna make a huge amount of difference. But let's dive in anyway because what else are we here for? If we start with the lossy files and at 128 kilobits per second, this, as long as you have okay equipment, is a file size you will be able to hear the negative aspects of. High frequencies will sound tinny, think of a hi-hat, the bass won't kick, and everything will sound a little bit muddy, or as though you're listening to it through an old school telephone receiver. But as the quality of a lossy music file rises, around 200, 250, the less people will be able to tell the difference between that and a lossless file. The interesting part is when you start to go at the very top end of the MP3, the 320 kilobits per second. Generally, a lot of people would really struggle to tell the difference between this and a lossless file. Yes, if you have fantastic equipment and really sit down and listen incredibly hard, you'll be able to tell the difference, but for the majority of the people, there is not a huge disparity between 320 kilobits a second MP3 and a lossless file in FLAC. Summing that up, for the majority of people, a lossless file really isn't a big deal or anything that you should overly care about, especially if you don't have the correct equipment or have invested a lot in audio gear that will really allow you to hear the differences between the two. Anyway, that is my attempt at summing up the wild and crazy world of music quality. Hopefully you either learned something, had a bit of a refresher, or at least weren't bored to tears. Now we have that understanding though of what digital music file is, it's time to get to the real meat of what this video is about, and that is CDs, why they're underappreciated, and why this guy loves them. Let's get granular on why CDs are an underrated format and not just something that your grand buys when she goes shopping at the supermarket. First off, quality. What was the point of everything we mentioned before about quality? 
Well, it was to show that CDs are incredible quality. Yeah, MP3s are useful for the majority of people, but I ask you this, are you most people? CDs were literally designed to play music at a quality beyond the capabilities of what the human ear can actually hear. That means in terms of audio formats that you can actually buy, CDs are some of the highest quality that you can physically get your hands on. And on a fundamental level, I love CDs. I love the depth and the richness and those extra bits of detail I get in the sound. But in the interest of being balanced, I only mentioned the MP3-driven Spotify service earlier. The fact is there are other options out there, such as Tidal, which delivers you CD-quality streams on a subscription model. But as we're talking about that, we bump into another benefit of compact discs. If you're listening to music on a streaming service, you have almost no control over it. It can be changed, it can be edited, it can be removed. You personally don't have any agency on where those files live. With CDs, that is not the case. When you have a compact disc, the world is yours. You can use it to literally play on a CD player. You can build a digital library. You can add it to an MP3 player. You can set up a media streaming service at home. The sky is the limit. You're in full control of your music files. But here is where we bump in to the biggest point. Let's talk about Tidal. For a subscription to that service will cost you upwards of $10 a month. And for that amount of money, you're not gonna get that many CDs. The balance here is how much you value having full control over your music. Now, as we're talking money, let's veer in to the next reason why CDs are undervalued. Yeah, CDs are expensive when compared to streaming, but I believe they are the most reasonably priced physical music formats out there. Let's get the first part out of the way. Brand new, just released CDs are not cheap. They still seem to hover around 10 to $15 per one. But it starts to make a little bit more sense where if you go on Amazon and try and buy those digital music files, they still cost like seven to $10 too. And with those, you have far, far less control over what you do with them and the file format and all those bits we've already touched on already than you do with a glorious, wonderful compact disc. The real value of CDs though comes in the secondhand market. Now, I don't know about you, but I remember 10, 15 years ago when vinyl was nowhere near as big as it was now you could go to you know flea markets car boots charity shops wherever you wanted to and you could get some really really cheap records cds are still in that phase the public hasn't swung back to enjoying them yet so in loads of places especially physical locations you can get cds for one or two dollars and be absolutely overflowing with gorgeous compact discs in other words with CDs, you are in bargain city. But I mentioned there a comparison with vinyl, and I think we should go and explore, you know, how these two formats battle against each other in a more in-depth way. I'm primarily a vinyl collector. Yeah, I grew up buying CDs, probably from the ages of like, 10 to 18, but in the past 12 years or so, I've only really bought records. I prefer the sound and feel of vinyl. The experience is just so joyous. The artwork is resplendent and without sounding too much like a wanker, it is just a special, amazing experience. But at the end of the day, I don't think they're as good as CDs. I've already mentioned the price of the formats, but let's have a look at some other issues. First off, vinyl is far more temperamental. It's easier to warp and break. Secondly, playing records is far more fiddly and complex. A lot more can go wrong. So even once you've got the record and a record player, you need a good cartridge, you need a fresh needle, you need a decent phono preamp. You have all these things that can just really hinder the sound and experience of playing a record. But a CD, you literally just have to plug it in and it works fantastically. I assume if you're watching this, there is a high chance you have your own digital music library. And compared to vinyl, CDs are far more adaptable at bridging these two worlds. Yes, you do get some records that come with a digital download code, even though it's getting a lot less common these days than it used to be, at least that's my experience. And 
if the record even comes with one of these, you have no idea what format it's going to be in. You may just be given some MP3s when really what you want are proper lossless music files. Then there is the storage issue. If you want to use CDs almost as a physical backup to your digital media library, well, you can take them out of their jewel cases and store hundreds of them in something the size of a coffee table book. And I think you'd be hard pressed to do anything like that with vinyl. So how would I sum and conclude this little section up? Effectively, CDs are not perfect. They're expensive, they're not as easy as streaming, they're nowhere near as romantic or engaging as vinyl, but that doesn't mean that they deserve the reputation they have of this kind of old, fuddy-duddy, slightly irritating, forgotten format. They are far, far better than that. Compact discs deliver optimum sound quality, flexibility, adaptability, can form the backbone of your digital music collection. They really are a Swiss army knife of physical music formats. And mark my words, there will be a resurgence again, whether that is now or in the future. Just watch, just wait and see. Let's shift the discussion from CDs themselves to actually playing them. And in my mind, there are two main ways of doing that. One is with a hi-fi, which we're gonna talk about most, and the other is with your computer, which we'll touch on very quickly at the end. Recently, I feel like I've completely rediscovered CDs, which really is why I'm doing this video. But a little bit of history. As a kid, I mentioned earlier I was a big CD collector, but I didn't really have the best equipment. I had kind of an all-in-one hi-fi system that I loved, but maybe didn't really give the sound quality that I desire today. And I think this is what's really blown my mind about rediscovering CDs now. As I have a full hi-fi separate system, I have a CD separate itself which is magnificent and wonderful and I'm going to talk about now. It is the Marantz CD6007. We've spoken about it multiple times throughout this video. If you're going to get the best that CDs can offer, you need a piece of equipment that can deliver that sound. And the Marantz CD6007 is precisely that. Now, a little quick note, this isn't going to be a feature-driven or technical little review. If you want more of that, well, I suggest you go to the description below and click for our full article where I'll go into more depth on this. Anyway, back to the Marantz CD6007. So if you're familiar with their amplifiers or audio separates in general, you'll be familiar with its aesthetic. It's a sleek, smooth looking device that fits in seamlessly anywhere in your audio setup. Secondly, build quality. It is thick, it is tight, it is well built, it's solid. And knowing the company, it's exactly the sort of hardware that I would expect to last for years and years. I've only had a little while, so can't vouch for it on that side, but I've used the company's equipment many times in the past and I'm pretty confident you'll be fine. It's simple to use, you don't have any problems getting into its intricacies. Uh, the CD play itself is supremely silent. You can barely hear a thing, if anything really. But what we're here to talk about is the sound. Oh my Lord, that beautiful, beautiful sound. I've tried a range of different genres with this from classical to emo and Genuinely, I have been blown away. It's the bases are rich and rounded, the trebles are high and clear, the presentation, the spaciousness of the sound. You can really hear separate instruments sparkle. It's been an absolute pleasure to use and I love the idea of giving it up. Maybe it's one of those bits of equipment that all the big bods will have to come and wrestle out of my house. But, um, it's just fantastic and it's really been a phenomenal way to rediscover an entire different format of music that I'd basically forgotten about. Of course, all that doesn't come cheap. The CD6007 costs about $500, which is a fair amount of scratch. But if you're interested in CDs and want to really engage in your collection, then I honestly think it's worth every penny. 
Anyway, I could go on and on about the Marantz CD6007, but we've got to wrap this video up. We've already been going for a while. And like I said, want to read something more in depth about it, then head to the description and check the article that links up with this very video. Now, at the top, I also mentioned another option of listening to CDs and trying to get some of the best out of the, their sound potential is through a computer. Just to touch on this really, really quickly, again, I would advise you to go do your research, but if you get a disk drive and then, you know, some sort of DAC, like maybe something by Chord or Audio Lab, you can also have a wonderful time experiencing the pleasures that compact discs can bring. Before we finish up, let's try and answer a few questions you may have had throughout this whole process. Number one, let's go. My first question is, do you have a separate hi-fi system already? If the answer is no, then maybe don't start collecting CDs just yet. If you have a hi-fi separate system already, then I think you can start looking into getting CDs and exploring the full sound potential they can deliver to your wonderful audio life. We'll have a future video coming up about how to build a hi-fi system and what you can expect, but I think this is really the cornerstone of any serious audio enthusiast. Another element of getting into CDs for me is whether or not you already have some. So at my parents' house, as I said, I've got a collection of maybe five to 600 CDs sitting there. And that makes the idea of kind of rediscovering and re-getting back into it far easier as I have this huge resource. If you've already been collecting, you know, another music format, then maybe it's not the wisest thing in the world. But where CDs could be a great choice for you is if you're just starting your physical music collection journey because you know the digital side is going to be there forever. The other reason that you could just dive straight into the world of CDs is if you've been buying lots of digital albums. We spoke about it earlier, but if you've been spending eight, nine, ten dollars per digital album, switch to CDs and have the best of both worlds. I think the biggest question, the biggest thing you need to discover about where physical formats fit into your life is your own experience. And everyone will have a slightly different one. And I'll just give you an example of how the different formats kind of fit into my media life. So when I'm working, I tend to use a streaming platform, something like Spotify, because it's easy, it's there, it's got a huge library and I use it for background music. When I am actually concentrating, I do have a digital music library for when I'm cooking and all of that. But when it gets to physical formats, I would say vinyl is my main driver. It's the thing I really enjoy using. And I have a range of really lots of more popular music. So say indie or jazz or the things that I just really adore. Now, where the other formats fit in, I find they really tie in with genre. So I have a cassette player that I just love listening to ambient music with, just because I think it sounds better on there. The way the tape changes and shifts over time really adds something to that music. Now, where I found CDs fitting into my life has been this kind of reinvigoration of my enjoyment of classical music. There's something about that genre's focus on complexity and dynamics and different performances and different quartets and quintets and symphonies performing the same bits of music that I think is just perfectly fitted to the format of CDs. Now, like I said, that is just how I like to listen to music and how the formats kind of work with me. All that is, is not a set state of affairs saying this is how you have to do it. It's simply a way of understanding how you might be able to apply your listening habits to physical media itself. And it's fun. And that's been my goal of this whole video really, is to show you the benefits of CDs, to remind you of the joys they can bring. And importantly, for me, just to kind of chat some nonsense about how much I love them and physical music formats in general. Basically, it's time to reconsider the CD. Of course, they're not for everyone. In fact, the majority of people would probably be far better just sticking to streaming as it's both reasonably priced, decent enough quality, and it's easy. It's got access to absolutely everything. But in terms of physical media, I think CDs are just hugely underappreciated. Their flexibility, their adaptability, they really are a phenomenally fine format for bridging that divide between the digital and the physical. 
It seems really strange to me that CDs are unloved by the music listening world at large. Of course, you'll always find pockets of this, but it's strange just, you know, considering all the points that I've made in this video so far. But I do think this will change either now or in the future. CDs will begin to make a little bit of a comeback. You know, whether that is through nostalgia or maybe something like streaming services become more and more fragmented and it drives people more into the reliability of a physical format. It is going to happen. Probably. Maybe. I don't know. Don't quote me on that. It'd be fun though if it did. Are CDs perfect? No, far from it. We've already gone through a range of reasons proving that, but they don't get anywhere near the amount of respect they deserve. So, CDs, if you're listening, just want you to know I respect you. Lots of love. Au revoir.